man is located by his conversation. Amen. All right, verse 32. And heard, he testified, and no man received it. Verse 33, quickly. He that hath received his testimony hath sent to his seal. God is true. Read. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not spirit by measure unto him. 35. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. Verse 36 is key. He that believeth on the Son, somebody say that again. Read it again. He that believeth on the Son, the Bible says in St. John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten Son that whosoever what? Believeth in him have everlasting life. All right. So look at that again. He that believeth on the Son hath what? Everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. So when somebody say God won't put his wrath on you, you're going to have to cross that verse out of your Bible. St. John 3 and 36, you're going to have to take a pen and blot it out. Because according to that verse, God has wrath that he will allow to rest on a person's life. And eventually, that wrath won't only just abide on him, but it will foreclose in due time. But hopefully this man recognizes his wretched condition. He recognizes his state uh, of being undone. In the sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah, the Bible spoke of the prophet Isaiah after his uncle Uzziah died. The Bible says, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah said, I saw also the Lord. Sometimes we need some stuff to die so we can see right. Amen. Uzziah was in his way. Things that he should have seen about the glory of God, he couldn't see it because Uzziah was in the way. But when Uzziah died, he said, I saw the Lord. Sometimes the stuff we need to get out of the way. Amen. And I won't itemize, but you just think about it. He says, but he was high and he was lifted up. And he talked about how his glory filled the temple. So much so until the posts of the temple were moved out of its place. And he says when he saw God's glory, he began to see his own wretchedness. Because he made a statement, he says, Woe am I. He says, For I am a man of unclean lips. When you hear a good message or, or when, you, when you hear a good testimony, you know, when the Lord really shows up, it, it convicts you. It makes you, I remember having to call your brother I know who's in Mississippi now. He said, he said, he said, when you, when you got to confess sometime, he said, just make you feel like a dog. He said, just feel so bad because you realize how far off you are from God. But Isaiah said, when I saw the Lord and he was high and lifted up, then I saw myself. And he says, woe am I, for I am a man of unclean lips. And he says, not only that, but I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. In other words, Isaiah, in his undone condition, was able to acknowledge his state of unreadiness. And he says, I'm undone, I'm wretched, I'm naked before God. And the Bible says at that time, it was a state of repentance. I look at that when Isaiah looked at his condition and he began to cry out before God, that was a type of repentance. He says, woe am I, because I'm a man of unclean lips, I'm, I'm off. And he says, then an angel, having tongues, went to the altar and took a live coal and placed it on his mouth and purged his iniquity and cleansed him from his state of unre unreadiness. And then there was a cry made, who can I send and who will go for us? 
And Isaiah at that point was able to say, Send me, Lord, I'll go. Now, that's likened unto us right here. Right here, we need to recognize our state of unreadiness. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and in sin did our mothers conceive us. And we need to recognize that just church attendance alone won't get us out of this position. Just being a good person and paying your taxes and being kind to your neighbor, you should do that, but that won't get you out of this position. There has to be something that happens between heaven and earth, between you and the Lord, that will move you from this position to the next position that we call the new man. And that is repentance. The Bible says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This man has a problem. He has a nature that is fallen, a nature that is contrary to the will of God. By nature, this man is opposed to God. And the Bible says, if you go to Galatians chapter number 5, we'll show you what this man has in him by nature. In the 51st chapter of the book of Psalm, David says, I was born in sin and shaven in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. And then I added to that that we were expelled into a world of sin impregnated with it. And so this man has a dilemma. Not only that, he has something in his nature that causes him to fight the will of God. Let's look at Galatians chapter number 5 and verse number 19. If you have it, say amen. amen. What does it say? Now, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. In other words, the works of the flesh, when it says they are manifest, that means they have come to the surface. And nothing worse than flesh being on the throne. And you can't reason with it, you can't deal with it, you can't, you can't, you can't have conference with it. The only thing you can do with flesh is to uh, do away with it. And so it says the works of the flesh are manifest which are these, all right? Which are what? Adultery, illicit sexual activity between married persons. And what's the next one? Fornication, illicit sexual activity between unmarried persons. And I know fornication covers more territory than that. It can get into pedophilia. It can get into uh, it can get into uh, uh, child porn. It can get into bestiality. It can get into homosexuality. It covers a lot of area for an occasion. But primarily it deals with uh, sexual, improper sexual activity between unmarried persons. All right, what's the next one? Uncleanness. Uncleanness, Uncleanness is not just that you didn't wash your hands before you eat, uh, you eat your meal. But uncleanness has to do with something that is not clean within the spirit of a man. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians. We'll come back to Galatians here. But let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. Church is more than a song and a dance, but it's, it's a changing of the life, a changing of the mind. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. Uh, make that 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm sorry. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter number 7 and verse 1. If you have it, say amen. amen. What does it say? Having, Having therefore these promises, dear beloved, let us cleanse ourselves of what? From all the filthiness of your hand, of the flesh, and the what? Spirit perfecting holiness where? In the fear of God. So there is a there is a cleansing, there is a fill, there is an uncleanness that can take place in the human spirit. And that has to be addressed by the power of God. 
And that's why in one of the